thank you for having me. It's fantastic to be here and uh, speaking about a topic I'm so passionate about. I'm a loyalty consultant and I work with clients to develop and, en and engage loyalty in B2B and B2C environments. Since this is such an experienced audience with CMOs, leaders and directors, I've put up a few statements that I know we've all heard before. You can Google plenty of these kind of quotes. And in short, someone who is already engaged and familiar with the brand are customers that are definitely quicker and easier to convert. And a referral from a trusted source is a very strong converter. And of course, we've all heard before the leaking bucket theory, which is the description of when customers, companies are losing customers and what they need to do to acquire an equal number of new customers to maintain the level of this bucket. The theory identifies that market to grow market share, we need to be especially good at new customer acquisition or to slow that leak. Interestingly though, there are a number of studies and articles that promote the idea that it, we should just accept that people leave. Customers are disloyal, they will leave, and therefore the focus should be on acquiring more than you lose. I'm sure that it's no surprise that in the loyalty industry, we believe there's a lot more to it. Customers can be loyal and the leaking bucket problem can be addressed. The question I like to ask is, what if that bucket stopped leaking or slowed down? How does this look like for you and your business? And what is the value of this? Thinking back on some of those previous statements, if businesses have approximately 50% higher chance of selling to an existing customer versus a new one, it would make sense to focus here. And it stands to reason that the bucket can stop or slow that leak. But how is this achieved? How do you create an environment where customers want to stay, want to keep engaging and want to do business with a brand again and again? And the simple answer is to understand them. The ability to use data and loyalty is a huge opportunity because the experience, the communication, the offers and the journey can all be personalised. Consumers are saying this loud and clear and they want to be heard, understood and want brands to make the experience relevant to them. Loyalty programs are known for data collection and the use of this data in return for personalization of comms and experience. It's called the data value exchange. I'll give you my info, you give me better offers and attractive rewards or make this product or service more relevant to me. Understand me, know me, customize for me. It's becoming an expectation. If you think about your own experiences, how frustrating is it when you're part of a program and you engage with them regularly or a brand that you shop with regularly, and then you get a generic marketing email or even better, a promotion for an item you bought yesterday or last week. A few examples of how data is used from a loyalty perspective, gaining new insights about customers, identifying gaps in the customer journey, personalizing promotions and offers, but very importantly, uh, win back is a critical one. This is the ability to identify the moment before the customer leaves and doing something about it before it's too late. Effectively identifying before they exit the bucket. I like to think about it like dating, identify the issue with your partner before they walk out the door. So data is effectively the guidebook for keeping customers. But it all does have to start with acquisition, the moment of truth, that first interaction, and the initial contact. If we start the data collection in the acquisition stage, we have a much more comprehensive view of the customer and a better understanding of their needs, wants, preferences, and styles. When we say retention budget, sometimes and many times we are referring to an effective, sophisticated loyalty program. One that integrates with business processes, the strategic business objectives, and very importantly, the internal customer data. It's common for businesses to lead with marketing and advertising activity 
and retention is much later down the line. But by this stage, there's usually quite an established churn rate. There can be common thought that loyalty programs are a cost to a business. However, when done right, they should have a positive ROI. Data is like the holy grail in loyalty. <clears throat> and the more we know about customers, the better. But there are challenges that face collection management usage of data. One challenge is the ability to aggregate data into one place within a business and creating a single customer view. Secondly, who owns the data once it's collated? Where does it sit? What is the right business structure to manage internal data? Next, I wanted to talk about some industry examples and programs that are using data in loyalty. Firstly, though, before I start, it's worth noting the types of loyalty constructs that you see in the market and across a range of industries. Some constructs are more suited to particular industries. An obvious example are points programs in the airline space. Others may use a combination of constructs within a single program design. So for example, in a subscription loyalty program, you may also be able to earn points and participate in monthly competitions. It's common to combine the constructs depending on the demographic and the program objectives. An example of a points program construct is an Australian supermarket, Woolworths Everyday Rewards. The member earns points while shopping at the supermarket or associated partners. They use data and personalization to offer the customer the option of earning points within the chain and then redeeming for dollars off the next shop, or these points can be converted to Qantas frequent flyer points. They also personalize within the member login account where the member is offered discounts specifically on items they've purchased before, not just standard discount across the range. Beauty is an industry that's really excelled with using data and personalization within paid loyalty programs. These are two brands that offer a paid subscription loyalty model, Software from Australia and Il Maquillage from the US. Both brands ask the customer to complete an online quiz and identify the right product mix for that specific customer. The data is then used to personalize not only the product, but also the packaging of the product. They offer money back returns policies to make sure the customer feels totally secure with their purchase and that the product is the right fit. Once again, the beauty industry using a paid subscription loyalty model. This is function of beauty in the US. They personalize the product and the online customer journey. The actual product formula, the shampoo or the conditioner is personalized based on questions to an online quiz that's at the outset. But I do like to note that they update the website while the customer is interacting. So while the customer is shopping on the website, their name is added to the online experience and they're also shown where their name will be printed on the bottle. Dropbox has a simple and effective use of a referral campaign within a subscription program, identifying when a member is running low on storage and offering them a free additional storage if they refer a friend. The friend also receives additional storage when they sign up. It's an example of rewarding customers with what they need when they need it and using the referral process within the program to acquire new members. CVS Pharmacy in the US have recently updated their program and members receive a cashback of 2% in extra bucks rewards on their purchases. This is one of the first changes to the program in 20 years. The program has 74 million members and gives them the option of using their rewards on the next visit or can accrue them to spend later. They offer personalised deals to members via their mobile app and they can be redeemed on their CBS Extra Care card. The app also allows members to plan shopping trips with lists, fill their prescriptions quickly and easily and also view personalised deals and offers. They include birthday benefits, surprise and delights and tailor the interests to their previous shopping history so they know what their customers have been buying and what they should offer them next. Reebok Unlocked is a program using gamification to earn points, which then upgrades the member to the next level. 
Reebok motivates members to share their personal data and personal information about themselves in exchange for points, allowing, allowing them to access really crucial zero and first party data. This enables Reebok to create a much more personalized experience. There are a range of exclusive activities for members, including challenges, sweepstakes, and bonus points events. And as the member begins to unlock higher levels, they're given access to more experiential benefits, such as VIP customer service, fitness experience with wellness experts, surprise and delight gifts, workshops, and certifications. So to wrap up today and in summary, um, data is so effective in acquisition activity and in identifying those high quality prospects. But partnering this with a really strong loyalty program can build a robust customer journey and ensure that the churn indicators are identified and resolved where possible. Data is so powerful at the outset, but also during the journey and absolutely before the customer exits the bucket. Thank you very much.